Hello, and welcome to Beyond Vanilla, Exploring Kinks and Fetishes, a presentation created for Professor Roberts' Human Sexuality class at Central Washington University, Fall Quarter 2010. First things first, defining terms. Vanilla, derived from the use of vanilla extract as the basic ice cream flavor, is plain or conventional sex. Depending on the context, the term can be seen as simply descriptive or as an insult. Kink has no formal definition, but is generally viewed as outside-the-norm sexual behaviors that are explored for fun. There is no psychological need or drive, and they are not necessary, but they can make the sexual experience more enjoyable. There are many different kinks, and individual interest in any particular kind will vary from person to person. A fetish is technically a form of paraphilia, but in popular language essentially covers any situation where there is a dependency on an object, situation, or individual outside of normal stimulation and which may cause distress for the fetishist or his or her partners. The psychological term paraphilia is broken down into eight types according to the American Psychological Association's Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders. Exhibitionism, Fetishism, Frauderism, Pedophilia, Sexual Masochism, Sexual Sadism, Transvestic Fetishism, and Voyeurism. In popular language, all of these behaviors are commonly referred to as either fetishes or kinks. While there are many theories about why fetishes develop, no definitive cause has been established. Most research has focused on psychoanalytical theories based on the research of Dr. Sigmund Freud, but there are competing non-psychoanalytical theories as well. What behaviors are considered normal or abnormal vary among different cultures. What is acceptable, or at least tolerated, in one culture may be taboo in another, and vice versa. These definitions may change over time. Homosexuality, for example, was once considered a psychological disease, but is now accepted as a normal expression of sexuality and is becoming more accepted among the general public. Finally, there may be a difference between what is publicly stated as acceptable behavior and what a culture is actually willing to accept. For example, monogamy is the commonly accepted norm for our culture, but the notion that many men and some women will cheat on their partner at some point is widely accepted and often shrugged off as an example of boys will be boys. Historic and modern cultures have been both sex positive, emphasizing the pleasurable and recreational aspects of sex, and sex negative, viewing semen loss as a weakness and encouraging asceticism. The Greek and Roman acceptance of sexual activity and alternative sexual behaviors was subsumed and replaced by the far more sex-negative viewpoints of Christianity. Early Christian theologians channeled the thoughts of their followers by condemning extramarital and recreational non-procreative sex. Even marriage was no license for sexual activity, sexual desire was to be rejected, and sex was only to be used to conceive. Pre-Islamic Arabic cultures were more sex-positive, and some of this has translated into modern Islamic culture. However, the inferior role of women in modern Islamic culture counters many of these existing sex-positive attitudes. Hinduism was seen as sex-positive, as evidenced by the Kama Sutra and erotic temple carvings. Transvestitism and transsexualism were tolerated, and it was considered important for men to express their femininity and women to express their masculinity in order to more fully understand the opposite sex. Our own culture, culture is displaying a growing acceptance and tolerance of kinks and fetishes. Some believe that this is a consequence of the rise of HIV and AIDS in the 1980s. The dangers of promiscuity led people to explore other ways of spicing up their sex lives, bringing kink out of the underground. As with many other once taboo topics, more discussion, awareness, and exposure to these concepts eventually leads to more social tolerance. In one prime example, the CBS crime drama CSI has been both praised and condemned for its regular use of fetishes or kinks in its plot lines. Kinks investigated by the CSI team have included diaper play, chubby chasers, or men who target obese women, and the, and the anthropomorphized animals of furries or plushies, and BDSM play, or bondage, domination, submission, sadism, and masochism. Professional dominatrix Lady Heather became a popular reoccurring character, acting as a worthy foil to CSI lead Grissom and exposing the subculture of the BDSM lifestyle to CSI viewers. One very important thing to keep in mind is that for many people, kinks or fetishistic constraints are perfectly normal. Many fetishisms are socially acceptable. Perfumes, seductive clothing, and even personal mementos are often incorporated into sex play without any question of normality. This type of fetishism is frequently a part of foreplay used to set or heighten the mood or, or stimulate sexual arousal. However, 
If they get out of control, they can be a problem. If a kink becomes necessary and the person cannot become aroused or sexually satisfied without the object or behavior, if bondage or domination play becomes unsafe without the use of safe words or other techniques used to ensure the safety of the participants, if interests in other paraphilias, such as non-consensual exhibitionism or voyeurism, frauderism, or pedophilia develop, or if any kink or fetishistic behavior starts to become damaging to the person or partners involved. In the end, do whatever feels right for you and your partner. Be vanilla. Be kinky. Find your fetish. Have fun. But in all of this, be safe.